Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna look at the approach mode from the uh, Pipistrel uh, virus airplane. Uh, it's based on a request of uh, one of my uh, subscribers. Uh, so, to show you the approach mode, we first need to take off. Uh, we're taking off from uh, Rotterdam Airport. Uh, as you see, it's a little bit windy, so we need to uh, steer a little bit to the left. So, now we're airborne. Need to uh, reset the altimeter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly to the south uh, and then I will explain a few things uh, because there are some more than only the approach mode which I would like to explain. Um, so sit back and relax. Um, this video contains some time slot stamps so if you only are interested in the approach mode you can directly jump to the approach mode if you like uh, if you're interested in the other information then I would say stay watch watching this movie and um, enjoy the nice scenery of uh, Rotterdam right so whoop, goes a little bit uh, slow that's due to all the custom uh, scenery being uh, loaded so we're airborne so Need to adjust the yaw damper a bit to prevent that we're going uh, too much down. So the first thing I want to explain to you is uh, this part, and currently you see it's um, set to ENR. Oh, let me zoom out a bit. Uh, so in the GNS 430, you can see that it shows here ENR. ENR simply means on route which means that it's not in approach mode or uh, takeoff mode, it simply is the default mode. There are two other modes where it can be in, and uh, one is the uh, term mode, which will, I would say, be active if you're approximately 30 miles from the uh, destination airport, and you've got the approach mode, and that one is used for the approach. Uh, so currently it's being set to, to VLOC, as you can see. So let's, uh, let's approve the, let's change the frequency. So we're gonna uh, modify the autopilot a bit. So we're gonna press the L button here and then use this uh, knob to uh, set the uh, altitude to 3000. should level off pretty soon and it's now set to minus 200 also funny but that's not what we mind we want to go to 3000 feet and switch on the autopilot so it's gonna adjust the uh, the altitude and then we're gonna use the heading mode which is being seen here to make sure that we're flying south uh, so you can use the uh, button here and you can see it's already uh, pointing almost to the south right so it's a little bit um, let's say we were already pretty good so you can see the blue circle or the blue marker uh, adjusting itself so we're gonna go to the uh, southwest and once we've uh, set the heading correctly we press the heading button for the autopilot and then it will adjust automatically as you can see so currently we're still in the en route option right so uh, we're gonna adjust the uh, CDI source by pressing the CDI source button to GPS and that's easier for when we're gonna configure the approach mode because then it will follow the GPS. Else, you will need to use uh, where you need to program the radios uh, to make sure that that's uh, all being done correct. Uh, going a little bit further to the left side. Oh, come on. We are going to program the uh, flight. 
Um, we're going to set as destination Rotterdam Airport. That can be done both by the uh, GNS main console, but you can also do it using the Garmin screen on the uh, left or right side. You can do it by pressing the FPL button, which stands for the flight plan. And then we need to push this one, this large button, and then we can, uh, can scroll. So we're going to set it to Echo Hotel. And then Romeo. Then Delta. Then we're going to press Enter. And then it has been added to the flight plan. So we're going to press Exit now and we will keep this one in and the reason I'm keeping it in is because I want to uh, show you something in a few minutes uh, as you can see the uh, CDI both for the GNS 430 and for the main screens have been set to uh, GPS and both are still set to en route uh, that's normal as already explained you need to wait till you're approximately 30 miles from the uh, airport and then it will show you uh, turn normally so we can uh, can have a look here so here's it's at okay hey it's zero uh miles which would be funny because we're already flying uh, for a while so we're gonna re reduce the throttling a bit and then we're gonna go to the uh, live map gonna decrease oh, incorrect button gonna decrease the button a bit so as you can see we already are uh, I would say a little bit further away from Rotterdam Airport which is here um, so what we can do is we can go to the uh, oh, direct option and pushing the letters again because for some reason this isn't automatically updated and the reason is because it normally calculates the difference between the previous one and the next one but since we didn't program any flight it will not show it right so keep that in mind another option is to use the nearest option which you can find here and the nearest option will show you how far you are from the uh, specific airport in this case so currently we're at 14.5 uh, miles from uh, Rotterdam airport and we'll show you the one which is most closest to you, right? So uh, Neumannsdorp is the most closest to us, uh, 6.5. Then we've got SE, I'm not sure which one that is, to be honest. And you can see Rotterdam, it's at 15.2. But what I want to show you is that this value really changes uh, the further you go away from the airport. Um, well, I would say the closer you get by the airport, but since we're doing a roundabout, so we're, we left from Rotterdam Airport and we're gonna land at Rotterdam Airport again um, we'll show you in a few minutes so we're now at 16 so let's enjoy the, the scenery One thing which is definitely, I would say, a recommendation is to um, search for the ILS information from the runways uh, prior to departing, right? That's what you normally would do if you're preparing for a flight. Uh, there are multiple sites which you can use on the internet. Uh, one of them is, uh, of course, the uh, flightsimdatabase.com, uh, which contains a lot of information. And it also uh, contains the ILS information, so the ILS frequencies, uh, which you need to program. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you now. Um, so I'm going to go back into uh, into the airplane again. So as you can see, we're currently 19, uh, almost 20 miles from Rotterdam Airport. So 
what you need to do is you need to change the frequency here so how to do that is by uh, pushing the button here um, by pushing the button here you can switch from communication to navigation and once we've done that we can use these I would say this knob which you can use either the large larger one or the smaller one to change the frequency um, so let me find the frequency of uh, runway 24 which is the one we want to use so we want to use uh, the ILS or the DME for runway 24 and that's 110.90 so we're gonna use a small knob here and then you can see that the uh, I would say number behind the dot changes and the one in front is the 1110 so we're going to change it to 1110 uh, don't forget that you need to press this button because this is currently the standby radio and once we press it again it will switch to the active one uh, so that's really important because else it will not work uh, so currently we're a little bit further from Rotterdam airport let me uh, zoom let me scroll to the list and you can do that by uh, pressing one at the button and then you can use the arrow down uh, to go down the list so we're currently at 22.5 you can see still see it's on ENR which means uh, en route so approximately around 29 30 miles will change to term normally um, so let's keep an eye on it so for now we prepared all the stuff because we want, don't want to select an approach and I will explain you in a few minutes uh, why we don't want to do that in the meantime, I will show you the uh, the outside of the aircraft and the scenery. So we're flying above the southern part of the Netherlands. Uh, so South Holland, Sealand, you see a lot of uh, windmills there for electricity. And a lot of water, right? All those uh, pieces are connected via bridges and dikes. As you can see, the water is, I'd say, some clouds not too much it's really nice weather currently So where's Rotterdam? You can see it's uh, blinking again. So 26.9. You can see it's still being en route, which is uh, so 27, 27 miles. And the other thing which is really interesting is that you can find the information uh, about frequencies for the approach and the ATIS uh, in the screen below. Right. So what we can do is we can uh, go to the uh, next airport go to the previous one because we're interested in Rotterdam and then you can um, come on. That's, that's what happens when you fly uh, so we need to go one position down leave it selected uh, whoop. no we don't want to use this one And here you will see the frequencies, runways, approaches which are available. Uh, so currently we're at uh, 29.5. Which is fine. It still, still shows uh, en route so I will do to show you how it normally should work. I'll probably 
don't need to, need to delete the full flight plan and re-add it again. So to delete the flight plan, uh, there are a few options. You can either use the clear button or you can use the menu and then choose the delete flight plan. And that will delete the entire flight plan. Then we can use the direct option again uh, to select the, the airport. So we're going to go to Echo Hotel. Uh, hotel. And then Romeo. Delta. Oh, there it was already. And that one can press buttons here again so enter and now it has been added uh, you can still see it's still set to en route for some reason um, I saw it in the past uh, using other flights that it was switching to turn mode so to let's see if we change the uh, autopilot to uh, navigation mode so now it will of course start to turn because we are, uh, well, and the plan is to fly to Rotterdam and land uh, at runway 24. So this is where we are. And the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, once it doesn't change, we're gonna set the approach mode because uh, that's that's where we're for. Or that was the the end of this video, I should say. So the aircraft is turning, right? So keep an eye on the RPMs. You don't want them to be too long in the red zone. It's not good for them. Not good for the engine. Now let's see if it switches to, to turn mode. The official manual of the uh, GNS 430 says it happens around the 30 uh, miles uh, mark. <laughs> it's a little bit vague around, so it could be anything, right? You can see that we're now uh, we look at the uh, left screen we're now at uh, 32.7 miles uh, from the airport so we will wait to for setting the approach until we hit the let's say 30 uh, mile mark maybe a little bit further and then we're gonna program the approach and as we already saw in the uh, direct mode uh, sorry it was not in the direct mode it was in the uh, flight plan option you can uh, define that by pressing the menu button and then uh, scroll down uh, as you can see currently it's uh, acting a little bit weird but luckily there's another option also to activate the uh, procedures button and that's by pressing the button here So currently we're at uh, 31 miles. One of the other observations I made is that this piece doesn't change ever at least. I didn't see it changing uh, for some reason. Ah. This one has now changed as you can see. Let me zoom in a bit, little bit further. You can see it now has changed to term which means uh, that we're approximately 30 miles from the airport. So now we can continue with the next step and that's programming the approach. So to do that you click this proc button here. Then we select the approach uh, by pressing enter and then it will 
automatically populate the airport, the uh, approach and the transition. Uh, but for now what we're going to change, of course, we want to change on uh, runway uh, 24. So press enter and then uh, do that again. Whoa. It's always a puzzle how to do that. Then I want to change uh, mass source to uh, ROT. Press enter again. You can see it automatically populates the sequence. So that's good. And then we're gonna go down until we have the uh, activate button right the load button only loads them in the flight plan the activate one and really activates the approach um, it's really up to you what you want to do you can either select uh, load and then later activate the uh, approach or you can directly activate it let me show uh, this mode so we're gonna first load it so we press enter then you will see it has added it to the flight plan so since we would say did not have any additional uh, waypoints in our flight plan it will directly jump to the ILS approach so which is fine uh, there's always another uh, method and that's by using uh, the menu option and if the uh, flight plan wasn't activated or if the approach wasn't activated you could do it here uh, normally but there's not a lot of options here which we can now uh, select so let's press exit now, do, now we deleted everything yeah now we did it correctly <laughs> so we're gonna say i'm gonna move press enter then we need to go to the flight plan again and then we need to re-add the uh, procedure so we're going to select the approach and luckily it uh, remembered all the stuff so the only thing we need to do is uh, activate it and now it has re-added them to the flight plan again which is good then we can go to exit right because we can simply show the uh, show the approach mode um, once that's done you can see that the gns 430 is also automatically adjusted it changed to apr and that's a little bit strange i would say because the official manual says it does that uh, by default once you're at uh, two miles from the airport if i'm correct um, and if it doesn't change you need to press the CDI button uh, manually to change the uh, to change to the approach mode um, keep in mind that if you may change to the flight plan you need to re-enable the navigation mode else it won't I won't work um, so what we're gonna, now gonna do is we're gonna fly to our next uh, waypoint if I press it here and so that's uh, ROT which is approximately 23 miles uh, I would say from our original weight point, right, we're currently already at uh, 21.5. Uh, flight level is 3,000 feet. Uh, that's another thing which you need to keep in mind is that the ILS approaches are, uh, I'd say, kind of providing you with some guidance around that, uh, what the flight level should be. Um, if you're not at that flight level, it's not, I would say, a big pain, but it could be that the uh, glide scope is picked up later. Uh, which results in some, I would say, more steep uh, descent uh, than you would normally uh, expect. So for now we can simply sit back and relax. Uh, until we're at uh, the um, ROT waypoint, which is uh, 20 miles uh, from here. 
Okay now. Again. Enjoying the scenery. a little bit deeper here you can really see the nice details of flight simulator right so you can see the water really really detailed also the scenery pretty detailed um, we're currently I would say following the airplane um, but there's always an option to I would say decouple it if you want And if you want to go back, then press the uh, 5 key and then you're behind the airplane again. So let's have a look how far we are currently. We're at uh, 70 miles from Rotterdam Airport or from the uh, ROT Waypoint Surrey. As you can see, that's the next one we're going to visit. Um, keep that in mind uh, once we're close to the airport we're going to use the approach mode uh, that will ensure that we're capturing the glide scope but there are some tricks which you need to know because this would say GNS1 acts a little bit weird uh, for example one of the things is that it selects the incorrect VOR so you need to change manually to VOR1 and same thing goes for this because it needs to uh, pick up the localizer uh, for ILS approaches Decrease throttle again. It's in the yellow zone, but you also need to, if you de let's say decreasing throttle, also keep an eye on this one because it you don't want to go too slow, of course. So we're closing by. So. One of the things that which you will probably observe is that uh, this, the closer we're coming to Rotterdam, the we'll say frame rate, rate will drop, and there are some some let's we'll say complaints about that, uh, specifically for Rotterdam Airport, that it will decrease the frames too much. Uh, didn't find a real solution for it yet. Uh, the only way uh, was that I would say disabling multiplayer helped a lot. So we're going 100 miles an hour, approximately. Here are also the, the speeds, right? So it's described here on this uh, side. It says, okay, hey, uh, flight level uh, 6,000 feet, uh, 12,000 feet and 80,000 feet. And here are the max uh, speeds which you can travel. But always keep an eye on the RPMs. Right, you wouldn't do the same thing with your car. You wouldn't drive into the red zone continuously. So what you can do as preparation for the approach is you can decrease the altitude to 2500 which is I would say good altitude um, for the approach. Um, how to do that? Well, you press the L button here 
and then you can use this button to change the altitude and in this case we set 2500 and that was fine now we're gonna uh, turn on the uh, FLC mode so flight change flight level change mode it does not always work if that's the case then use the vertical speed mode and the vertical speed mode as you can see there's a small blue arrow here uh, which shows you uh, the, I would say the decrease and if we would zoom in to the screen a little bit more a little bit too far let me try to move to the left last one It's better to do it like this. If we would uh, zoom into this screen, you can also see that the uh, value which you are configuring using autopilot is now set to 300 uh, feet per minute. That's the uh, decent rate. So we're slowly decreasing, not too fast, uh, because we still have 10 miles before we uh, arrive at the uh, ROT waypoint. You can already see the uh, city popping up again. Here's some industry on the, uh, on the left side. And the harbors. And we're closing the, uh, say, the configured altitude, as you can see, 2500. So we're 60 miles uh, or 60 feet above it. And then the airplane will start to make some changes, right? So let me show you on this screen. Uh, if we would zoom in. Oh, let's zoom in. So if it not, does not focus on the aircraft, then simply press the button again and it will focus on it. Um, then we can decrease. So what we're going to do is the, here's the ROT one. Then we fly to the next one, which is Echo Hotel something 25. 7 if I'm correct then we will make some turns and then we will fly straight into Rotterdam Airport as you can see we've also got some other uh, airplanes in the neighborhood seven miles to go a lot of water if you look very closely here you can see the Erasmus bridge which has been added as part of uh, world update number four there are some other uh, sceneries which I added manually uh, we'll post the links into uh, the description of the video so you can also give them a try yourself uh, keep in mind that they will have an impact on the uh, frame rates uh, per second Time we're flying 
pretty close to the other airport, although <laughs> the other airport just passed, so let's see if we can find it. I don't see it here. Was it, was it there? I can't see it for some reason. So we're flying by the, the south part of uh, Rotterdam, uh, so we're flying uh, straight to uh, approximately this point. And then we're gonna, uh, say, start maneuvering the airplane. As you can see, 3.7 miles uh, from uh, our initial waypoint. See the, the large buildings in the uh, close to the water and close to the bridges. The cool thing about uh, using the navigation option is to, that it will automatically follow the, the GPS, right? So it will automatically um, say go to the next waypoint. Uh, so this is safe mode. If you prefer to set the heading automatically, then you can use the heading mode uh, option, and then you need to use the uh, the bottom uh, or the uh, button here, right, located on the uh, bottom of the uh, Garmin screen. So you soccer stadium. And on the left side, some uh, highways and some other cities, or part of the part of the city, I should say. Another bridge. In the left corner. Now we're closing by 0 0.4 from Rotterdam uh, waypoint ROT. So you will see it will update uh, within a split second, right to Echo Hotel 258, which is uh, 8.3 miles uh, from our current location. See it also has switched here. And then are all short, I would say, distances between the waypoints. Another building in the water. Another bridge. This is also a custom one, it's not the default one, so don't be surprised if it's not in uh, your installation of Flight Simulator unless you installed all the add-ons for the Netherlands. I would say all, most of them. So now we're flying away from Rotterdam, right? So you can see the city uh, is here. Um, the airport is around here if I'm correct it's pretty close to the city itself
and from there on we're gonna fly the approach uh, if we approximately at Echo Hotel 253 and the reason is that Echo Hotel 253 is the first waypoint here so then we're gonna enable the uh, approach mode once we're I would say aligned and then let's see if we can intercept the uh, glide scope weird things can happen uh, in this mode I must say I've already experienced some weird some weird things here so here and there so let's see if uh, if we succeed uh, this time and the good thing is that you already see uh, on this screen you can already see it has the the G in here and this one it's moving closer and closer to the 2500 which means hey it has already found some glide scope so it's picking up the signal of the uh, navigation uh, frequency we configured and now we're coming closer and closer by and that allows us to switch on the approach mode and then if we don't if we've done that then you will see the uh, letters gs golf shara being displayed here once it has intercepted it they will turn to green and everything will be fine uh, for now we're gonna still use the GPS mode because we're uh, too o too far away um, from the airport Point six miles. Zoom in a little bit for zoom in, not zoom out. So one mile to go to the uh, Echo Hotel two five eight. And then we're gonna go to uh, Romeo Romeo. It has already done that, right? So Romeo Romeo is not that far away. It's a 2.1. You can see that it has now changed the glide scope uh, completely. So it's now on the top, right? And the once it's captured, it will uh, remain in the middle. So let's make sure that the uh, altimeter is set correctly. pretty critical to do that
will soon start to make turns again. Turn to the left normally. Here it goes. And now it's really time to uh, say start preparing. So we're at 4.3 miles uh, from Echo Hotel 253. Uh, we're at uh, 2500 feet, which is uh, say fine for now. We're at uh, 96 uh, miles. And you can see that if we drop the flaps, and that's being displayed here, we need to decrease speed. So if we uh, drop them with one, we uh, need to drop the speed to a lower rate, so a maximum of 81. And if we drop the flaps completely, then we've got the uh, 65. So keep that in mind, else you will break your uh, flaps. So keep in mind that normally, right, you would contact the the airport to ask for permission to land, etc. But that's not we've, what we've done, uh, say, in this tutorial. But keep in mind that uh, you can always open the uh, ATC and then ask for approach, etc. Uh, but for now, we, we will leave it. It's of course recommended to do it. But for now, I just want to show you the approach mode. which we will soon be able to show you. So you would probably see that the GS1 is starting to drop, although it might be slowly initially. So we'll say well, once we're at uh, Echo Hotel 241, you will see it a little bit better. Zoom out a bit. So I go out till 252, approximately. And then we've got some waypoints here in between, but not too much. I can already see it dropping, you see? So it's dropping slowly, but it drops. Here you can see the uh, the stutter which I already warned you warned you for. But will only be for a very short period. That should be gone. Uh, and so you can see the uh, GS one on the glide scope one is is dropping right. So it's almost in the center. And uh, that's where you can decide to activate the approach mode. It's not strictly necessary to do it at that specific moment, but you can do. Um, so you can enable it. And once you've enabled it, make sure that you also change the CDI mode to VLOG and then enable the approach mode again. If you don't do that, it will not work. And also make sure that you set the uh, CDI source to the localizer. You can see it's set to a uh, log one which is localizer, so it has picked it up. Uh, you can also see, oh, I'm going a little bit too fast. Uh, if we would zoom into the upper part, you can see now GS has been uh, enabled, which stands for glide scope. So it has intercepted the glide scope correctly. Uh, so you can uh, start, I would say, decreasing the throttle and drop flaps by one. Uh, keep in mind that it's recommended to first decrease speed and then drop the flaps, but Flaps are also used to decrease uh, speed in some cases, and also, of course, to uh, say change in uh, to ensure that you stay in the air. Uh, 
So if we zoom into this part, you will see that it now keeps the green mark in the middle and it starts to decrease uh, pretty heavily, as you can see. It will also automatically adjust, uh, if needed, the uh, direction. So we can keep an eye on uh, on this screen. So as you can see, we're almost uh, almost there. Almost at the uh, Echo Hotel 242. Uh, you can use the instrumental approach, right? Uh, the IFR. Uh, you, if you would like, you can even keep your sc your screen like this. And then it will automatically uh, make sure you're landing correctly. Or if you're, I would say, want to keep an eye on it yourself, you can also uh, have a look at uh, this view. In some cases, that's, uh, I would say, a recommendation to do because there are some, I would say, some issues in Flight Simulator where the ILS are not working correctly on all airports. So keep that in mind. You see it slowly turning. Really slow. Now we're coming pretty close, right? So we would look at uh, with this view you can see the runway already in front of us so we're gonna decrease even further and drop the flaps a bit more so always keep your hand with the throttle right so that you can increase throttling again if needed And here you see the, the poppy lights right on the left side, although it might be hard to see. You can see them here uh, burning. So if I would uh, go out, I would uh, go really fast with the, uh, or really fast, faster with the drone. You'll be able to see it. The only thing is that uh, the poppy lights are also intercepting the drone. So here are the, uh, the poppy lights on the left side of the runway. So let's uh, go inside the aircraft again. Decrease speed a little bit further. The 500 mark. So keep a hand on the joystick. So you can see that the, the aircraft makes uh, its own corrections if needed. The only thing which it doesn't do is really the throttling piece. That's something you need to do yourself. And always keep a hand on the stick to make the uh, corrections if needed. And this is also a good learning point, right? Because if you would do the manual uh, or the landing manually, this is really how you should do it. Really point on the on the end of the runway. And as you can see, the ILS guide is really, I would say, good because we're touching it exactly on the, the white spots. Uh, so really, I would say, in alignment to the uh, poppy lights. So we're gonna decrease further. And the eagle has landed so in this how to we discussed how to use the approach mode it was a little bit maybe a lengthy uh i would say video to discuss the approach mode but i want to show you also the uh 
what is it the Garmin uh, GNS430 and how it reacts to the different approach modes how it reacts to the different let's say methods of uh, changing from en route to uh, turn mode and then going to the approach mode um, we use the ILS to uh, make a successful landing on the Rotterdam Airport runway 24 um, hope you like this video if you like this video then consider to use the like button if you've got questions or comments based on this video then feel free to uh, post your question or comment in the comment box below the video and if you would like to stay up to date about new videos i'm posting then consider subscribing to my channel thanks for watching and see you next time